Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in the last video, we took a look at the blocks and how to grab those. Now let's take a look at the transaction hashes of the pending transactions. Now, just like last time, we should probably look at the documentation. And if you remember correctly, we had to subscribe to get the new block headers. We also have to subscribe to get the pending transactions. So if you cruise through here, you'll see that we're going to subscribe, pending transactions, you know, dot on data. It's very, very similar to grabbing the blocks. So let's go right to it. So let's first grab our boilerplate code from the last project where we created that Web3 object and we set it up so we can import the environment variable for Infura. So we'll paste that in here. And instead of grabbing the block numbers, what we're gonna do is grab the pending transactions and it's gonna be the hashes, right? So as you remember, we have to do that subscribe. So we'll say web3.eth.subscribe and then we're gonna say pending transactions. So that's how we subscribe to those. And then much like the last one, we're gonna create that asynchronous function that grabs the data down, associates it to a object. So we'll say dot on data. Wait for that to come back with async and associate that to a transaction. Now, once we have that, we're gonna do this arrow function here and we're gonna console log out the results. And we can do that with the console.log. And we will make a string with the back ticks because we need to access that variable within the string. So we'll say transaction. We'll make a space here and we will put our transaction variable here. So we'll say dollar sign brackets tran action. Now this should be able to grab that back and put that out. And now we're going to capture the errors. So we're going to say dot on. And this time we're going to grab the error instead of the data. We'll say error. And we can print out any errors that we get within the body here with another console.log. And I'm trying to explain this as I'm doing it because, you know, a lot of people don't have coding experience and JavaScript has some weird syntax that I don't even fully understand half the time. So hopefully the explanations are good. Um, but so again, you know, we're grabbing that Infura URL from the environment variable and putting that into our connection string in our Web3 object. We're using that Web3 object, connect to the Ethereum network and subscribe to all the pending transactions. Once we get the data back, we associate that with the transaction object and we can just grab that information and print it out. Or if we get an error, we print out that error. Pretty simple right now. We're gonna look into some other stuff here in a minute, but let's see if this is actually working. And also remember, if you didn't watch the last video, go watch it if you don't know what this .env is because you need that Infura WebSocket provider in order to connect to the network. So without that, you're not gonna be able to do it. Go back to the last video. I know I'm gonna get questions, but anyway, let's see here. We got node and we'll say zero one and this should start pulling back transaction hashes, right? So here's our transaction hashes. And these are all the pending transactions that are in the mempool that are waiting to get put into blocks, right? So we have all these transactions and we can grab one and hopefully this is gonna be out of the mempool by the time we get to what we're gonna do next. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the data within that transaction and actually take a look at what's there. In order to do that, let's create a new file. So say a new file. I'm just gonna call that viewtransaction.js. Now in here, we're gonna grab that boilerplate code again because we're always gonna start with these because we need to have that Infura URL and we need to have that Web3 object. So we're gonna paste that in here. And now we're gonna use something called get transaction, right? So if we go back to the docs, I open that up here. It's a get transaction, 
We need the transaction hash and that callback. So let me pop into here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say web three dot eth dot get transaction and we'll say tx hash and we'll actually need a transaction hash up here so we'll say tx hash equals and let's grab that from our last output here say copy and paste that in here so now we have that and we're gonna need to do a callback function here. So we'll have those objects for the error and the result right in there. And then within the body of this, we're gonna say, hey, if we get an error, we'll handle that. And we'll just console log that out. Just the same as before, we're just doing that first here. And then we're gonna say else. And we're gonna say, if we don't get an error, we actually want to access the result and print out stuff from it. So let's first just console log out the whole thing. So console.log, and we'll say result. Dot, actually, we'll just do the whole result in there and that should be good. We'll put this into the brackets with the dollar sign in front so we can access that. And we should be good to go to actually run this now. And what will happen is, you know, from the Infura, we'll connect through with the Web3. We'll grab that transaction hash right here. And if we don't get an error, we will print out the result, right? So let's see if that works. If this has already been in a block, we should be able to grab that. And we could probably grab it even if it's not because we have the hash. It'll just say be a pending transaction at that point. But let's see what we got. So node 02 view transaction.js. Object, object. So I did something wrong there. Let's take a look at our code here. Oh, I think I know what I did wrong. I think in this case, I actually only need to put result in here by itself in this particular case. So we'll say result and we'll try that again. Okay, so here's our transaction and you'll see that we have the block hash block number, chain ID, here's the gas price. Um, the value looks like it was zero. And we have the to field and we have a from field. So let's parse out some of these and actually put them in here. So for that, what we're gonna do is copy paste a few of these and let's grab the to, the from, and the value on this. Because that would be useful if we're looking at the blockchain to see who's sending what to who, right? So in this case, I think we do need to use these back ticks. And what we're gonna do is say from colon, and that's our string. And then we're gonna say dollar sign bracket. And we're gonna put result dot from and we'll say two colon space, and we'll put this in here again in the brackets. We'll say result dot two. And then for the last one here, need to end that with one of those. Okay, and then on this one, we're gonna say result.value. All right, so that should work. And let's run that now, and we should get less data. It'll just be, you know, parsed for us. So we'll say node 02, view transaction. Okay, perfect. 
So what you'll see here is we have the same values as up here, except we just parsed out exactly what we wanted. So we grabbed the transaction that was originally, we, you know, we grabbed all of these transactions that were pending. And then we said, hey, let's look at one of these transactions. So here's the full data. And then we just parsed out what we wanted because maybe we're just monitoring like how much people are sending across and where it's going to and from. And maybe we're looking for specific uh, to or from values. It really depends what we're trying to do. So hopefully that was useful. In the next one, let's look how to do this with like streaming transactions and add to it a little bit. So hopefully you learned something, share it with your friends, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.